I'm in Yorkshire to discover just how strong the resurgence of British manufacturing is. George Osborne, the Chancellor, has called for a march of the makers. Yorkshire remains the third largest manufacturer in the UK and exports are booming. But will this march lead us to renewed prosperity and a rebalanced economy or come to a shuddering halt? ATB Morley began making motors for use in the UK's coal industry in 1897. 20 years after most local pits shut, the Leeds-based company is making more machines than ever. Chief Executive Ian Lomax told me how. One of the reasons that Morley is so successful in China is that it has an extremely good name in China. So in China, the name Morley has the same sort of connotations as, say, Sellotape or Hoover. You expect a mining motor to be a Morley motor. And just to give you an idea of where it's going, in 2002, our turnover was about 7 million. Last year, we did 19 million. This year, we're expecting to do somewhere between 21 and 25 million out of this rather small factory. While the so-called brick economies of Brazil, Russia, India and China offer the biggest potential market for UK exporters, the reality is that they account for just 5%, less than Ireland. Yorkshire itself exports less per head than the national average. Almost all enterprises in the UK realise that the home market is going to be very flat over the next few years. Most obviously, if you look, for example, at universities, the home market for home students is going to be pretty flat. So, like all other enterprises, we're looking overseas. Recent figures show the surge of British exports is beginning to slow. But even in a small town like Kirby Moorside, you find companies that are bucking the trend. Perry Slingsby Systems is investing heavily to improve its capacity to make undersea robots and submarines for the oil and gas industries. Kevin Taylor, general manager, explains why. There are two reasons for our success. Firstly, the brand name, Perry, is known all around the world, major oil companies and major contractors. And secondly, the people that we employ, the graduates that we bring into the business. Um, we could be based anywhere, but it's the quality of the people that produce, design and manufacture the uh, high quality equipment that we sell to our clients. How important is the weakness of the pound being to the business? Very important. Um, when the pound and dollar rate was at two to one, um, that drives our prices up in the markets that we're trying to grow in, which is Asia Pacific and the Americas. It makes us less competitive if the dollar rate goes up to the pound and makes us more competitive if it comes down. So we obviously prefer you know, a, a lower dollar to pound uh, rate. But not everyone is taking advantage of this benign environment for exports. I think the, one of the most worrying indicators from our survey was that 70% uh, of all business surveyed hadn't even considered exporting, whether they be in the manufacturing sector or the service sector, because they didn't believe they had the right products or services that customers overseas would wish to purchase. And I think that's something that the chambers, government and all sorts of agencies uh, need to help businesses to open their eyes to the opportunities. While there may be some success stories in Yorkshire, there need to be more if the region's exporters are to lead it back to strong growth. And that's not all. Global demand needs to remain strong and the pound remain weak. Andrew Bounds for the Financial Times in Yorkshire.